Hello, this is the fifth tutorial for running Continuous Change Detection and Classification, or CCDC, on Google Earth Engine. In this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating the Classify CCDC application for classifying CCDC model segments using training data. The link to this application can be found in the video description below. This is part of the OpenMRV suite of tutorials, which includes instructions for developing the training data necessary for the classification that can be found in Module 1.2. So when you run the application, you should see a screen like this. Um, and the first thing you need to do is load the CCDC coefficients and change information. Um, and so that was performed in Cambodia in a previous video tutorial. When the previous step of calculating the coefficients and change information is complete, um, you will have an image asset. Um, and that is what we'll be actually classifying here. Um, and so the first step is to um, paste the path to that asset in this box that says the input path. And so if you have multiple result files um, in an image collection, you could specify that the input type is an actual image collection. But in our case, this is just an image. Um, so we're going to change this input type to image. And then when we ran it using um, the fractional years for the, the date format. So we can just leave it as that. When you click load, it'll go into the, the result file um, and determine what the, the input bands used were, the coefficients, um, and it'll display them in these checkboxes here. And so basically you have the option to specify what bands and ancillary data um, and what coefficients to use for the classification. Um, and then what classifier to use. And so there's only three classifiers at the moment, um, random forest, support vector machine, and Euclidean distance. Um, and right now it, it just uses the de default parameters for all of those. And for random forest, I believe it uses 200 trees on top of that. And so, you know, you could play around with the different classifiers. I generally recommend using random forest to start. Um, it's been the most tested to use with the CCDC algorithm. And so you'll see that there are all these checkboxes. Some are checked, some are not. Um, the ones that are already checked, these are what are um, already exist within the result file. So for each of the spectral bands, there are the CCDC regression model coefficients, um, intercept, slope, cosine, sine, um, and then also the model root mean square error. Um, from these parameters, you could also calculate amplitude and phase. Um, which just kind of simplifies the coefficients into a couple less bands, uh, but it's similar information. So I, I generally recommend just, just sticking with um, these pre-calculated coefficients that are already checked. You then have some ancillary data you could use for classification. Um, these data are described in more detail in the, the written documentation that accompanies this tutorial. Uh, but you, you get the general idea just by the name. Um, elevation, aspect, DEM slope, those are all calculated from a digital elevation model. Um, rainfall and temperature, um, those are you know, environmental variables. Uh, I think it's, it's the average over a year. Um, so just a real broad sense of what's you know, the average rainfall or temperature of that time period. Um, and then there's a couple other ancillary data sets water occurrence, how often is a pixel, um, contains water, uh, what's the population of the area, and then percent tree cover. That's from the, the Hanson University of Maryland tree cover uh, data set. So then we, we need to define um, our study region. And so if you have a, a very large area, but you just want to work on a subset, um, you could optionally just select a subset of that area. Um, and I'll refer to the, the video tutorial on um, submitting the change detection and the coefficients for more instructions on how, how to use each of these specifically. Um, in th that last video tutorial, I use this tile intersecting point option. So basically when you click on a map, um, there's a global grid that um, the, the grid cell that intersects that point that you clicked is what's used as the output region. 
And this is basically a grid that was defined in um, your small enough boxes that the processing will usually complete. There won't, you won't get any memory errors or computational errors, but they're big enough to, to just be a considerable amount of area. So I generally recommend using this. It's pretty easy. You could go anywhere in the world and just click and get a pretty sizable box. Um, and that's what I did for the last tutorial. So that's what I'm going to do again here. And so how this works is that you basically go to the location that you want to perform the analysis and just click on the map. And so I'm going to use the same location that's right around in central Cambodia that I used before. And so this will be the same tile that was used to uh, create the change detection results. Oh, that's right. Okay, the final um, set of options are defining your training data. Um, and so we have already developed training data in Cambodia um, as part of a previous tutorial. And so I'm gonna put the path to that here. I'll also put this link, this path in the description below. And so there's this box that says define training data strategy. Basically, if this training data is for the whole world or even the whole country, um, you could optionally either uh, just use what's in this box here or use you know, the entirety of the training data. And I generally recommend just using what is within your uh, study area, so just what's within this box to keep it you know, local to the actual classification. So for that, I'll choose this within output extent. Um, you then need to specify what the attribute is uh, that um, contains the training, the land cover label. And for this data set, it's land cover, so we could just keep it at that. And finally, what year do these labels correspond to? And so for this training data set, uh, the, training, the land cover labels correspond to the year 2018. And when we click Run Classification, what this is doing is classifying each of the CCDC model segments. Um, so if you recall the output of the, uh, the change detection and coefficient calculation, um, for each pixel, there are a series of segments uh, based off of, and they're separated by some sort of spectral change. And so for each pixel, there could be a different amount of segments. Um, and so what gets displayed on the map is the classification of just that first model segment. Um, and so this is around the year 2000, but if we were to take the second model segment, that would be a different time period for each pixel. Um, and that's because there's different change detection going on for each pixel. And so in the next tutorial, we're gonna demonstrate how to get an actual classification for a specific date. But what we're doing here is just uh, performing, performing the classification on all of the segments and outputting, um, outputting a stack of classifications with roughly, I believe it's 10, uh, 10 classifications for each pixel. And if there's not 10 classifications, then it's just gonna be blank. I mean, if there's not 10 segments for a specific pixel, then it's just gonna be uh, blank for the, the subsequent bands. And so we see real quickly, we get this classification here. Um, the, the color is pretty random, uh, but we could go into the layers and change that. It's called the first segment. And so to give it a custom, this is completely optional, optional but if you want to make a little bit more sense of it, um, we will change it to just one band or grayscale visualization, um, select the classification band. Um, this training data only had four labels um, or four land covers. So I'll set the range from one to four find a palette and then set colors for each of the land covers. So the, the first land cover label or one was forest. So I'm going to put that as green and I'm just selecting random here so we can make a little bit more sense of the map. Um, two, the next one was water. So I'll do blue. Um, three was herbaceous. So for that, I'll do uh, I'll do like a just kind of dirty yellow color. 
and then and finally four was developed. So I'll just do black for that. And so there's four classes. The range is one through four, four different colors. Click apply. Give it a minute to recalculate. Um, but we could already see up here that this big lake is blue because that's classified as water. Um, we have some forest in here. This is just loading. Let's see if we zoom in, if it might load a little bit faster. All right, here we go. We could turn on the satellite to start to compare it to the background. Um, and so this is the first segment classification. Um, some things you could do to improve the results are improving your training data, adding new training data, um, change some of the input parameters. You know, sometimes some of the ancillary data really helps. Other times it could give some weird artifacts. Um, and if you want to, the classification to be to load quicker, although this is pretty quick, um, one step in what's going on in the background is for each of the training points, it needs to calculate you know, all of these inputs. Um, so it's basically going to the, the change detection map or the change coefficients and extracting these coefficients. Um, if those aren't saved in the training data, it will, in the console, print out this note that um, the training data does not contain all of the uh, predictors, so it has to calculate, see, so it has to calculate it on the fly. Um, and it'll also offer you um, a task to export that data. So, so next time you would specify that here, where the data is pre-calculated, um, and that'll load a little bit faster. But that, you know, that's just kind of an extra that's this training with predictors here. That's just a kind of extra feature to make it run a little bit faster. Um, and then you could also export the classification segments. So that's what I'm going to do here. This is that stack of class of classifications where each pixel um, is for each pixel, each band uh, is the classification for a different segment. And in the next step, we'll get to how we could extract dates from those different segment classifications. Um, but I'm just going to call this Cambodia classification segment. Why not? A quick run, and this should take, I don't know, up to an hour or so for an area this size. Um, it'll, it will take a little while. It's a, there's, there's a lot of data being classified here, and it's a pretty large area. Um, so that's performing the classification. Um, and yeah, the next step, we could get to actually making um, land cover maps as specific dates and change maps. Thanks. Bye.